Hi guys, it's me, Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and in this video that's continuing on with my handmade watercolor making series that I am showing you, I'm going to show you a basic a way to mix together that watercolor binder that I made in my previous video with some pigment and a little bit of honey to create a watercolor paint. And I'm just going to be doing a single pigment paint today to show you because there are lots of different recipes that you can come up with and you'll want to keep track of your measurements when you do that and this is really something that's up to personal preference so uh, whatever color combinations you come up with mixing your pigments it's a lot of experimentation sometimes but a lot of the colors that people make in the handmade watercolor community are kind of their own special recipes and me in particular i don't really want to share some of my special colors that i've put together because they are unique for me but you can come up with all your own recipes and this is just going to show you how i mix together a single pigment which is fairly easy to do um, just depends on the type of pigment you choose some pigments mix together much easier and quickly others take a lot of mulling um, or even just a lot of mixing before you even start mulling um, but I will quickly, uh, I will just go over some of the supplies that you'll need for making paint. All right, so obviously you are going to be using our watercolor binder that we made in our previous video. Some kind of pigment. This is a cobalt blue light pigment. I bought this from Jackson's. There are lots and lots of different companies that create pigments. You can also find mica pigments that are shimmer that don't require mulling. But for something that's a matte pigment like this, um, generally what you're finding here is the type of pigments that we will have to mull to incorporate the pigment particles into our binder and get a nice smooth paint that doesn't have little clumps of dry pigment in it. So uh, there's that and then you'll need something to mull your paint with and I have this really large one. It's got a really nice flat surface. It's nice weight to it. It's a larger muller and um, you can buy these from many different art supply places that make paint. Pigment suppliers will often sell them. You can find them on eBay as well. Um, there are different sizes so this is what I started with was a really small one. Um, but that's something you can uh, branch out into as you get better at it. Um, just invest in what you're comfortable with if you're just starting out. But this one is fairly small and that's what I started out with until I realized I really liked making paint and I wanted to do it a lot. So then I bought this one and it makes it a lot faster. Um, here you can see I have a tempered glass sheet that is, this one is 11 by 14. And then I have it on a non-slip craft mat. This is from Fiskars. And I use that so that it doesn't slide around on my desk. Um, you can also use the shelf liner material. But you want this to be tempered glass uh, so that it is really strong and it doesn't crack on you because you're gonna be putting a lot of pressure down on that. And what I've also done is I've roughed up the surface of my tempered glass sheet so that it has a bit of, a, not really a grit necessarily, but um, you can use silicon carbide, which is like tiny little, uh, granules of silicon carbide. I don't really know what exactly it is, but um, you can purchase that. A lot of the pigment suppliers will also sell that as well. And you just mix that with a little water and you mull that on your surface just to get it a little bit um, roughed up so that your pigment can uh, mix together a little easier. If you're just going to be doing mica pigments, you don't necessarily need to do that because you're not going to be mulling it. But for this, you want to have a nice way to get those uh, particles broken down and mixed into your binder. Something else that I'll be using is some honey. And I really like this particular honey. They sell it at our local grocery stores, but it's an Iowa honey and I'm in Iowa and I really like to use some local products and help out other small companies. Um, so this is a brand of honey that I can find here in my stores near me and they produce honey uh, that is made here in Iowa. So that's something fun that I add just a little bit. Oh, the other thing that you'll need is some kind of face covering because some of the pigment powders, depending on what they are, um, can be if you're gonna be using anything that has toxicity to it, maybe some of the cadmium pigments, you will maybe want to get um, something a little bit higher up, like an N95 or a painter's mask. But for something like this that doesn't really have very fine particles, um, just cloth face mask, it would be just fine. You don't necessarily have toxic pigments in all of these. I try to use mostly non-toxic. Uh, just because I have two kids in my house, but um, something like this, it can have a dust up and it will get in your face, which is not fun to breathe in. So do wear a mask when you're dealing with the dry pigments. Once you mix the binder into it, you don't need to wear the mask. 
Um, the tool I'll be using to mix with first is just a palette knife. Um, you will see on some people's mixing videos, they use this style. I usually just use this style to pour into my pans and I just really prefer this style of palette knife. So this is just a personal preference. You can buy a multi-pack that has different sizes and try that out. All right, if I was going to be making a recipe, I would want to use measuring spoons. And just like we used in the previous video, how I talked about having uh, separate bowls, measuring spoons for all of your binder materials, you wanna make sure that you have a dedicated set of measuring spoons for mix, mixing together your pigments. And when you're creating colors, just make sure that you're keeping notes somewhere in a notebook, a journal, um, I keep a spreadsheet on my computer that says my recipe measurements. So if I'm having a quarter teaspoon of titanium white, which is PW6 pigment code, I'll put that in there and then I'll add, you know, one tablespoon of whatever blue I'm using or red or yellow. So those are some ways that you can keep track of your recipes that you come up with colors. So then you can recreate them. And this is a mistake I made when I first started is I was not keeping track of what recipes I did and I didn't measure my pigments. So then I can't recreate those colors if I wanna make a second batch. All right, and since I'm just making a single pigment color here, I'm just gonna scoop a small amount out with my palette knife. Um, if I was gonna be measuring, I would do this and I would level it off with my palette knife back into there to make sure I got an even measurement. But I actually don't have a whole lot left in the star. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the rest of it. And this is why I use this type of a, a dropper bottle because it's a little bit easier to um, pour small amounts of pigment at a time because I don't want to put too much because then I'll have to add more pigment to it afterwards. A lot of people make kind of a little volcano well so that this doesn't spill all over the place. So I'll just add a small amount to start. And I know this particular pigment will need some honey to it or more vegetable glycerin if that's what you prefer because it doesn't re-wet as easily with the smaller amount of humectant, which is my glycerin. So I want to add something that will help that paint re-wet. So I add a small amount of honey and it really is just going to depend on the type of pigment, how much you're going to use. Um, for this amount of pigment here, I might use maybe about a teaspoon, but I don't really measure it. I just kind of, it's by feel for me. So this is something that, I mean, it just it's something you can kind of learn the basics of, but it's really going to need to be a test it out yourself and figure out what works best for what pigments you've chosen. So this is just kind of giving you the basic of idea though of how I would mix it and mull it. And I chose this pigment to showcase because it doesn't take very much time to mull. Um, it will only take me a few minutes for this small amount of pigment here. If you're only gonna be making enough paint to fill up one pan, this is way too much pigment for this particular color. Um, you'll wanna just do small amounts, maybe starting out with a teaspoon and a few drops of your binder and mixing that together. Um, and sometimes you don't even need to mull it if you have small amounts of some pigments. So um, again, this is all just going to have to be a uh, experimentation, but you'll get the basic idea of how to mix it. So I'll start out by just using my palette knife to incorporate those liquids with my dry pigment. And then after that is all incorporated, then you can take your mask off because you don't have dust flying around anymore. And then we will use our mulling tool to evenly disperse that pigment into the binder. All right, and as you go, you'll notice I didn't have enough liquid and I like to just start out with a small amount and work my way up because if you add too much, you end up with a big sloppy runny mess and then it's too runny and you have too much binder, it will not dry properly and you'll have really, really sticky paint. So just add small amounts at a time and the texture you're going for it's kind of hard to describe because not all of the paints will be the same. Um, I will note that a lot of reds are very hydrophobic and they will take quite a bit more binder to incorporate all of the pigment. You'll be mixing it for a long time. Uh, one rule of thumb I find out that if it's very hard to move your muller across the pigment, 
is that generally you have too much pigment and you need to add a little bit more liquid. So adding more binder to it to make sure that you can actually move your muller across that. So now I actually have a nice amount of liquid in there, but it's still very, very uh, sticky. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more and I kind of want a nice, a nice gluggy. I don't really know what particular word to describe that with. But it's just, it, it's all about trial and error with this. I don't want it to be so thick that it doesn't spread out. You want it to be nice and smooth. And the reason we're gonna mull this now is because I still have a lot of particles of pigment that are not incorporated into that binder. And so when I go to start mulling this, all of those small little bits are going to get ground down even finer and dispersed more evenly into my binder. So make sure it's nice and clean. You can wash it with soap and water and you can go in a circular motion. And I kind of focus on the center of my uh, glass slab because that is where I have um, ground it down with that silicon carbide and it's got a nice rough texture to help disperse those pigments and grind them down. I am noticing I don't have quite enough binder and the reason I feel that is when it's very difficult to move and it's quite sticky. So I can add a little bit more and mix that in. And as you go, it'll spread out on your slab and you'll just take your palette knife and scrape up the excess paint and just move it back to the center and then continue mulling it until it's nice and smooth. And sometimes it may look nice and smooth depending on the type of pigment. Uh, but you still have quite a bit of particles of some pigments that take more time to mix in. So you'll have to do some tests of your paint as you're going. So just have some scrap pieces of watercolor paper nearby um, and just a little palette that you can put a dot of paint onto just to test it out as you go. And then you can see if you still have um, some big fine particles that need to be ground down more, certain colors do take quite a bit longer than others, especially reds. I've noticed some yellows take a long time to mix in. And you'll notice if you're mixing a couple colors together that maybe um, yellow in particular, if you've mixed it with a blue, there might be some yellow particles that are floating up to the top of your paint because they're not all the way combined in. So learning about different pigments as you go, uh, I'm always trying out new pigments and learning the different properties of them because not all reds are created equal, not all yellows, blues, etc. Um, I have found that a lot of oxide-based pigments mix together super easy, don't require nearly as much binder as some of the other pigments. Some of your pigments may get kind of a gelatin texture as they're drying a little bit on your slab. And you may need to add even just a little bit more of your distilled water to it. So I also keep a big dropper bottle of distilled water on my table. And I use that to um, just thin out my paint so that it's a little bit easier to pour in the pans, realizing that a lot of that water will evaporate out as it dries and you'll need to add a second or a third layer. All right, and like I said, I chose a pigment that doesn't take much to uh, incorporate. I'm mulling it around just a few times here and it is nice and smooth and incorporated. And sometimes you will have to just kind of clean off the edge of your muller and just scrape off the extra paint. There can be quite a bit there sometimes depending on what pigment you're using. Um, and you sometimes have some dry pigment that doesn't get mixed in. You'll wanna make sure, oops, sorry. You'll have some dry pigment that is on this side that you wanna make sure that you clean off so you can kind of take your palette knife and clean that off. And then you can scoop this all up, scrape it all up and do a little container or you can go directly into your paint pans, however you wanna do it. Uh, personally, what I like to do is to scoop this all up into just a little cup and then I go wash all of my supplies and then I come back and I fill my paint pans from there. That's just my uh, personal preference because I don't have a huge workspace. So I need to use my countertop here 
to fill my pans and I don't want to set everything on this dirty paint slab. So um, that's something that is all up to personal preference. So that uh, kind of is the process of making my paint. And like I said, there's so many different variations on the recipe you can do based on the type of pigment you're using and mixtures that you come up with. But that is the basic idea of how I mix my paint.